Did you think I'd forgotten about the Sony a7S III? Wondered if I'm still covering the news. Well, today I have three images of the Sony a7S III front, top, and back views. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news like this. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including gear discussed, are placed in the description down below along with current contest, current contest details for the Canon 50mm f1.8. I know it's a Sony video, but I'm, it's still a contest and I'm still giving you away. If you win it, you can go ahead and sell it. All right, now I do apologize. I'm a little late on the news uh, in the last week, but as I mentioned uh, in previous videos, I've had surgery and I'm slowly recovering. My first priority is to my health. So do forgive me if I'm a little late on the reviews. And also I did get the, a, uh, the Canon R5 this weekend. So I was focused what little time I did have to shooting with that because, well, wouldn't you? A brand new camera before it's on the market? I'm sure you would. Uh, one other thing, I just shot this video, this entire video, and when I got up to bring it to the computer, I realized I forgot to press record on the audio. So I feel like a bit of a, yeah. I know, we all do it, right? It all happens, so here we go. Second time's a charm, right? All right, let's get right into the photo. So here we are, we have a photo of the front side of the a7S III. Um, looks like a nice sharp looking camera. Top view, we can see that is a little bit thicker, um, but nothing's nothing bizarre and special there. And of course, on the back here, we get to see that flip screen, which is really, really awesome. I think that's an essential capability. It's like with IBIS and a flip screen should be in every uh, mirrorless camera that's coming out today. I think it's an absolutely essential tool, especially if you've had surgery like I have. Um, you can move that camera, you can adjust the flip screen without having to, you know, put yourself into all sorts of weird positions. So let's do a quick recap of the capabilities of this camera as rumored from Sony Rumors. Now keep in mind, we are getting the announcement tomorrow July the 28th at 10 a.m. New York time. So this is, it almost doesn't really matter here. We're, this is just a quick review of what is rumored and then we'll actually get to see what actually comes out. So let's jump right into it. So the price of the a7S III is gonna be around $3,500. So that probably is code for $3,499. But the real news here is the 12 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor with fast Rita. I'm, uh, and it's like, it's gonna have the stack sensor, uh, but, and it's going to have a quad bear filter. Uh, and this really surprised me. I thought they were going to go with a 15 megapixel sensor with a quad bear filter, but I wasn't aware that they were working on a 12 megapixel one. So Sony's got a great lineup of sensors that they've been working on. And this one's going to have the quad bear filter. And what that means is nor now most cameras, except for the Fuji will have a bear filter in it, but this one having a quad bear filter, I'm not going to get into all the sciencey stuff about it, but essentially you have two choices. When you have this filter, you can, essentially double the resolution. So take you up to about 24 megapixels, which is huge, or you can double the amount of light that you're able to pull in. So for video, well, you'd probably want to double the light, but for photos, you might want to double the amount of information because already the a7S III with a 12 megapixel sensor, is going to do really, really well in low light. So this could take this camera from being, eh, as a photo camera to, oh, okay, this will be fine for me, right? We'll just have to wait and see what Sony presents to us tomorrow. I hate specifications because they really don't tell the full story. I want to see the use cases. I want to hear what they have in terms of a vision for this camera. What are the goals for this camera? What they expect it to, um, to give us in terms of results. It's going to be capable of up to 240 frames per second in 1080 or FHD. Uh, 4K, 120 frames per second is where it tops out, but it's capable of 10 bit 422 internal and 4K at 120 frames per second raw over HDMI. So if you're a video person, this pretty well gives you almost everything you need in terms of resolutions and modes right there. So this is really, really awesome news. There is no record limit in 4K 60 video. Now, is that code for meaning there is a record limit in 4K 120? Uh, if there is, so what? I mean, other than scientific purposes, honestly, how many of us are gonna record 4K 120, which is slow motion, for anything more than, 10 to 20 or even 45 seconds at a time, let alone, um, I think the R5 has a limit of 20 minutes. So you record for 20 minutes in 4K 120, put it in a, a 30p timeline, that's now an hour. It, it's redonkulous. So um, I, I really, I, if Sony puts a restriction on 4K 120, not a big deal there. Don't worry about that. Uh, don't get caught up into the battle between the R5 and the, the A7S III. 
if, if you do have a lot of Sony glass, then obviously this is going to be the camera for you, even if the R5 is better in some areas. Or uh, if you're more balanced between photo and video, you're probably looking at the A7 III. 1080, up to 180 frames per second, will have sound and autofocus, but obviously if you go up to 240 or anything past 180, you're either going to lose sound, autofocus, or both. There is no internal RAW. Uh, it's going to have a similar codec to the Sony FX9. The AF system is going to be similar to the Sony A7R4, and it's going to have a bit rate of 600 megabits per second. Uh, it's terrific for 1080. For 4K, I would have liked to have seen this a little bit better. So what does this mean? Are we going to get all I and all video modes and resolutions? And frame rates? I don't know. Uh, a lot of times you'll see long got for Sony, which is the same thing as IPB, where you, you get a full frame every three frames, and the other two frames are made up with some algorithm, some mathy stuff, which I'm not going to get into. That's not the purpose of this video. So where we could see a... People like to use the term cripple hammer. I'd like to say restriction is if we don't see all I in all of these video modes, I would say that would be one negative because as professionals, we we don't want to have to deal with IPB. I was a little bit, a little bit harsh on the R6 because it didn't have all I. All I is very essential because you want to have all the information there. You don't want to lose any information. Um, but for the ordinary average filmmaker. I'll be honest with you, uh, unless you're shooting a lot of fast action or there's a lot of movement in the scene, IPB most of the times is going to do a really good job. And I'm going to be doing some test videos on the R5 when I get it uh, later this week, comparing all I to IPB so you can see what it's like when I'm shooting in a studio setting or I'm shooting outside. But for pros, which they're saying this is for, I really do hope all I is available in all video modes. So ISO, we have a base ISO of 164 S log 3. Uh, we have a max ISO of 400, 9,600, but there is no dual ISO. Uh, one thing that really grabbed people's attention is the 16-bit uh, linear RAW output for 4K. And, so, and we're supposed to be getting 15 stops of dynamic range on this camera. So those two features alone are huge. 16-bit uh, linear RAW output and 15 stops of dynamic range. That would, And it really doesn't surprise me with the sensor, especially if it's a quad bear filter. Um, but... Wow, I, I'm really eager to see what this camera has to offer. This could be a, a low light beast. This would really, really get. I mean, if you're into, if you're Hollywood and you're doing a lot of camera scenes or any scenes at night where you want to put cameras in areas where you can't fit an, ex, uh, an area Alexa, or you don't want to risk damaging those expensive cameras, this camera would be positioned very well for those scenarios. So it has an EVF with a 9.44 million dot resolution. It has a passive noise-free cooling system, so it's not supposed to overheat at all. Really good news. Now, I, I know a lot of my friends, they have Sonys, and some of them are just, they're doing all these things to prevent it from overheating, and it's really tough when you're shooting in 4K and you have to worry about overheating at 15 minutes. So Sony's listened to you. They've uh, architected this camera to prevent overheating, which I think is terrific news. Um, and <laughs> with that, News alone, that's one big reason to upgrade to the A7S III over um, anything else. I think that's really terrific news. Um, as content creators, we want tools that allow us to take the vision we have in our mind and put it onto film, or in this case, a, a digital sensor. Uh, we don't want the technology getting in the way. And when you have to worry about things overheating or record limits, they do get in the way. They are irritating. Um, as much as I really like the R5 this weekend, that record limit was annoying. Um, with my 70D, if I hit that record limit, I'll hear click because it's a DSLR. Ah, I've hit the limit. With the R5, no, there's no click. I have to remember to set a timer on my watch or I can use the Canon Connect. And, but now I'm having, to, I'm having to think like a grip or somebody else who should be on the team monitoring this stuff. That's taking away my focus from the content that I'm trying to create. So well done, Sony, uh, removing the record times. Canon, if you're listening, please remove the record times. We don't need them anymore. That UK or that European restriction, it's gone. You can remove it in a firmware. We won't mind. Thank you. All right, so hopefully they will do that. So another big piece of news here, um, it is two card slots, but um, not only can we use UHS-2 or CF Express Type A, not Type B, I'm surprised by that, Type A, uh, but it says that it's going to take, each slot will take both of them. So you can put two UHS-2s in there or CF Express ones. And I'm kind of curious by that. Having had the R5 for um, 
a weekend. One thing I noticed is that the CF Express Type B is super fast. I was getting transfer rates uh, up to 1700 megabytes per second. I could pull 4K off the computer like it was a few seconds of a clip. It was just truly remarkable. Um, you can't record to both card slots at the same time. If the Sony does that, then I think that's a huge win. But in terms of um, UHS-2 versus CF Express, um, the price difference between them isn't very huge, especially right now. They're almost identical in price, but the performance, uh, you do get better performance with the CF Express. So I've changed my view on this. I would rather see dual CF Express card slots, and I really don't see the need for a UHS-2. Yes, you do have to buy a card reader, but there's an opportunity there. I bought the uh, ProGrade um, Thunderbolt card reader, and because my Mac has a internal storage of 3,000 megabytes per second, I said gigabytes yesterday, 3,000 megabytes per second, I can take um, files off that CF Express card at full 1,700 megabytes per second, which is a huge improvement to workflow. And if you're a professional or if you're just working with 4K, a lot of times time is going to matter and that's where I like the CF Express and I think in hindsight I wish both cameras had dual CF Express type B card slots but it is what it is. It is it's great that Sony's made it so we can put both of them into both slots or you can flip them around. That's really really good news. It also has a removable port door, two USB-C connections, one micro HDMI and no flash sync. It has a similar design to the Sony A7R4 and of course that fully articulating screen that we saw earlier. I love that. I'm not going to say anything more about it. Just pause. We've got a flip screen, fully articulating clip screen. Flip screen. That's good, right? Okay, so when are we getting it announced? Well, we all know it's coming tomorrow, July the 28th at 10 a.m. New York time. So just under a day away. When will we be able to get it? Well, I don't know when pre orders start, but I imagine tomorrow. And it's going to start shipping in two weeks. That's amazing. So it, we're here. Can you believe this, guys? Finally. Um, for Sony fans who've been waiting five years for this next one, anybody who's been waiting for, I've been waiting for the Sony a7S III for five years. And for Canon fans who've been finally waiting for a camera that doesn't crop video, that doesn't cripple video, you've got a really good camera. So whichever, whether you're looking at Sony or Canon, um, there's going to be awesome options, but we'll, we'll know more tomorrow. I'm really excited to hear what Sony has to offer us. But I think you're going to be very impressed. And even if you're a Sony fan and you love, or sorry, even if you're a Canon fan and love Canon, or same with Panasonic, tune in because as camera geeks, camera nerds, as people who enjoy the art, um, there's something to be gained from that and there's something to be enjoyed. Um, just sit back, watch it, and um, enjoy. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget the contest ends for the uh, I forgot the name of the lens, the EF 50mm f1.8. It ends July 31st, so uh, subscribe to my channel for your chance to win. That's it. I do have more details in the description down below, or you can watch this video here. Again, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.